this is a this is very factual. A large majority of the people walking the planet, folks, made it through middle school, high school. They never competed in anything. Most of the things that are out there, the triathlons, the marathons, the Murph, even the Spartans, the Tough Mudders, that's a big, high, scary barrier of entry for them. And with DECA, we wanted to knock that barrier of entry off the side of the cliff and throw it away. There is no barrier of entry now. Every single person walking the planet has their start line. And you know what, JC? We've proved it out, brother. We got about a 99.5% completion percentage. Most of them are finding their finish line. I don't care if they're 100 pounds overweight and never competed in anything in their life. Welcome to the Spartan Decca series on Spartan Up with Jared Cogswell, Director of Sport, and Yancey Culp, Director of Programming. Hey, thanks for joining us today, team. You know, we always say this here with Decca. We're all athletes in this game called life. So you know what? Today's episode is part four of our five-part series called A Life Fueled by Fitness. And we're calling this one today, Know Your Scoreboard. Listen, folks, we're going to be talking about recognizing progress, talking about your wins, performance tracking, fitness gamification. Really excited about that one and much, much more. This episode of Spartan Up is brought to you by Brightside. Dealing with anxiety or depression can be paralyzing, but you should know you are not broken and you're not alone. And when you want help, Brightside is there for you. Take a free mental health assessment and get up to $100 credit on your first month of treatment at brightside.com slash Spartan. That's brightside.com slash Spartan. What's up, Spartans? Welcome to the DECA series on the Spartan Up podcast. I'm your co-host, Jared Cogswell, along with my brother, Yancey Culp. And today we are continuing the mission of helping those on the roller coaster ride of fitness. And instead of stopping and starting and doing it all over again, we're going to keep your keep you on that ride, riding up that mountain, right? And this is called a life fueled by fitness. And for those of you who have not heard our previous episodes, in episode one, we talked about training with a purpose. And notice I said training, everyone, not exercise, training. That's what we're doing here is training. In episode number two, we asked you to find your fitness sport, those fitness activities that you actually enjoy. And then my favorite one, my favorite episode, Yancey, was find your tribe, connecting with like minds, because we know the power of team is always greater than the power of one. And today, today we call this one, Know Your Scoreboard. This is the one where we're going to be talking about recognizing progress, your wins, performance tracking, fitness gamification. Yeah, we're going to talk a lot about gamification today. But before we dig into this, man, I want to brag about our affiliates in Jacksonville, Florida. And this one, I'm wearing it, man. I, I put the hat on backwards when I wear my Get It Core <laughs> Fitness t-shirt. I got right here, right here, Yancey, Pearson Fitness, the first ever DECA Strong Activation. Uh-oh, we got it backwards. Here we go, Pearson Fitness. A shout out to that culture there. We're coming to Jacksonville for the DECA trifecta here at the end of the month. So I want to make sure we gave them some love. We pulled up to Pearson. We did not know what the hell we were doing. And we activated the very first official DECA at that place. Joey Pearson opened up his doors and let us in. And we celebrated fitness with about 25 people. And I will, it was the first one, brother. And you know what? That was one of the greatest moments in my fitness career. The fact that it all kind of came full circle there, and we we got to celebrate with with his tribe. So yeah, y- you know that's a, a special place in my heart for the Denver folks and, and the Jacksonville folks and all of our affiliates. But yeah, man, it's super exciting. We have Jacksonville coming up here. Listen, team, um, when you officially have something on the calendar, JC and I talk talk about this all the time. It is, it's training. It's not, it's no longer exercise. And we're always kind of graciously pushing people to say, let's stop calling it exercise. And and ultimately we're training for life always. It doesn't matter who you are. You are training for life. But 
when we do specifically put that event, that test, that competition on the calendar, it is training. And it's it's really fulfilling to get that stamp sometimes, to get or as we say, earn that mark. And 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 because you've you you've invested this time in your in your gym with your tribe, what you're doing, you're training for that big day, and then you earn your mark. And and if you have truly invested your time, that's gonna translate out on course or in the event, and that mark's going to improve. So it's so darn important to to have that scoreboard out there. And um, you know, guys are bad about it sometimes. They'll be like, well, coach, I'm not, I gotta get, I gotta get in shape first before I do my event. Let me tell you something. Just putting that event on the calendar will do so much at help pulling you off the couch sometimes when you've talked, we've all talked ourselves out of a workout. But when you have that looming out there on your calendar, it's such, I call it a healthy drug. This, Spartan, we call it the Spartan paradox and the, and the huge valuable importance of putting something on the calendar. And listen, one more thing till I pass it back off to you, JC. It's, there's nothing wrong. And we're going to dive back into this a little deeper, but right now I just want to kick this out here. There's nothing wrong with that first event of the year, or maybe your first event ever for some, being low barrier of entry, something that, that can fit into your lifestyle. And, and maybe it's not going to take a whole bunch of training for you to, to find that finish line, but something to train for is, is super important, my friends. Yeah. Yancey, you, you're also remind me though, when it comes to testing yourself, whether that's in the gym or outdoors, you know, like you may just simply go out for a one mile run and say, Hey, this is how long it took me this, this first go around. And then mm -hmm. you progress from there, but you, I think it starts with goal setting, right? When we talk about knowing your scoreboard, what do you, what do you want that scoreboard to look like in the first place? Like, what are the metrics going to be? Or, you know, like the, the corporate jargon, what are those KPIs, those key performance indicators? Because I think this digs into a lot of different areas of fitness in terms of tracking your progress. And, you know, we talk about ultimately to celebrate your fitness, you got to know what you're celebrating, right? You got to know where you want to be. So I think it starts with goal setting. Um, and, and I know that sounds really generic, but I think we, we have to set some goals for ourselves. And you know, um, especially in the line of work that we've been in for a long period of time, if you don't write down those goals that you have for yourself, it could be performance related. It could be weight loss, um, strength gains, feeling better, which isn't as objective um, as I think we would like. But today we're going to be talking more and more about this as far as paying attention to those metrics that show you your progress and or track your performance. And I'm, I'm really excited to talk about the gamification side, but... I want people to understand it's like you need to write down your goals and you need to not just write them down, but I'd say put post-its everywhere, put them on the bathroom mirror, put them on the rear view mirror in your car, remind yourself of your purpose. It goes back to our first episode about fueling your life through mm -hmm. fitness. And, and I, I think the other thing to remember is that we're really hard on ourselves. We're really hard on ourselves. We're our biggest critics. And I think you have to look for the win. So you look down, hey, here's my, here's my goals for week one uh, on my fitness journey, for example. And we've talked about the other ways to get here. But what I like for, for my clients to do is at the end of the week, write down those wins. I don't even care how little they are. You know, it's a win. I want, let's, let's see if we can get 10 wins instead of three losses. And, and we, we'll figure out all kinds of losses for ourselves. But if you, if you brush your teeth, that's a win. If you, if you showed up in the gym and walked right out, that's a win. You walked in the gym, okay? I, I just want people to recognize like, hey, it's, it's little steps. It's a journey, right? And you have to you have to acknowledge and recognize for yourself. It doesn't have to necessarily come from a coach or for, from your tribe. Um, it's always better to be surrounded by those people, but we can't continue to, to just be hard on ourselves. So re remember your mission, remember your purpose. Um, and then 
write down those wins, write down exactly what you want to accomplish the next week. You know, if, mm-hmm. if you said, Hey, I want to get five training sessions in this week. Um, you know, and, and you didn't get them all done and you got four done. That's a win. Okay. You still got your training in and maybe instead of five next week, maybe you go six, you know, I, I, again, I think there's a lot of power to pumping ourselves up and, and motivating ourselves and inspiring ourselves instead of being hard on ourselves. Then I think after you do that, drill it down, drill down your plan day by day. Okay. So if you know you've got to train today, what are you specifically going to do and why? What's the purpose of your workout? You know, what's the priority? We, we learned that from, from the guy that we dig is, is Chris Henshaw, uh, the guy that's, that's coached so many CrossFit Games champions and, and general fitness um, enthusiasts as well. But the idea is staying intentional about mm-hmm. our workouts. And then measure yourself, you know, uh, towards your goals. What are the metrics? Um, is it weight loss? Is it body fat? Is it strength or is it performance? Uh, myself, just to share uh, with the listeners, is I, I, my preference is to base my, my measurements on performance and, and effort. Okay. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about that, but, um, it's, I I think what it boils down to is staying intentional keeps us consistent and it will impact your performance and the rest of, of the fitness goals that you have out there. So, um, I, I thought we, we could spend a little bit of time Yancey on, on, uh, the topic of gamification, fitness gamification. It's become this, this buzz phrase, you know, throughout fitness over the last few years, what, what's gamified fitness to you? I got to add one more bullet point to something you just said, man, you really sent me on a a mental journey here. That's something that's so important. This is a game changer for it's, it's been a game changer for all of our clients over the years and it will continue to be a game changer. You must set your life up for success you when you when you buy into a program it must fit into your lifestyle i have clients all the time that say coach why are you only giving me three workouts a week it's because i want you to be successful if i give you six or seven you're gonna fail most weeks so really and truly you hit up on that you you know you hit up on that make sure it plugs into your lifestyle. And that is so freaking important, man. Don't set yourself up for, for, for failure and buying in too deep. Um, with gamification, you know, I, I briefly said it when we, when we cranked up here for me, it's so val it's so important for me to be able to, to see that I've moved my fitness needle periodically and so, so I, I, I bought in, I, I got some workouts in this week. You know, I tested when I, when I, let's, let's paint a picture here. I became a new member of a gym and they, and they tested me and they gave me a program. There were some group classes this week and I, I bought in and I, I'm, I've, I've been consistently going to three to four a week and you know, I've been here for a month and I retested and my mark improved 25%. That I get chills even talking about that. For me, I've been in fitness my whole life and playing sports and everything and competing. And every now and then when something improves, I get so geeked up. And for that person that's never competed in anything in their life and may think, well, I'm not very competitive. When they, when gamification is plugged into their life for the first time, it is the most beautiful drug because they start to realize that, wow, I do have a little bit of competitive juices in, in my body. So I personally feel it's got a place in every single person's life. Uh, so many people have just never experienced it before. Yeah. <clears throat> One of the things that we stress with DECA is there's gamification. It's, um, you know, and, and we're not sticking our chests out and saying we're the only fitness test out there. That, that We'd be silly to say something like that. But we are a new standard of testing. And I think it's the type of testing that's motivational. It's inspirational. It's something that also can, you know, 10x your community and your culture within your gym. However, I think it 10x is your mindset, you know, because it gets you focused on a number. And we've talked about this with uh, all of our affiliates and participants and, and so forth. But it's it creates this 
this um, objective mark for me to shoot for to be a better version of myself. Because we know, we know that if we stay consistent with our physical physical fitness journey, okay, it's going to positively impact us here and here, right? So mm-hmm. you may have weight loss as a goal. You may have, you know, I want to get stronger. I want to feel better. But you you now have a scoreboard. That DECA mark is part of your yeah. scoreboard. So talk a little bit yeah. more about that. So the way when you and I, we, we like to say when we were murdering the plan early on when we, when we built DECA from dust, um, it was so important for you and I both to make sure we wanted, we love to say this, on the same arena and the same day using the exact same standards, we wanted every single person to be able to walk in off the street and and on that day, maybe they've never done anything in their life and maybe they're unfit and overweight and they don't really like where they are in their fitness journey right now. Day one, they were going to be able to earn their mark. So that's one end of the spectrum. And the other end was the cyborg athlete, like we like to say. They could come in and turn themselves inside out and everybody in between. So we want, first off, at the foundational level, we wanted something to where a massive percentage of the entire world could test and earn that mark and then invest in some time and that mark it would improve no matter what your level was it was going to improve and we wanted we based it on very rudimentary movement standards all 10 zones each one by themselves is so basic and we said you know what let's think two to three thousand years ago when it wasn't fitness and exercise it was survival and, and, you know, now that's not quite as important. You know, we, we, we kind of have to, now we, it's training and exercise. Now we don't have to movement. It isn't necessarily about survival as much now as it used to be, but we wanted to create that rudimentary test. So as I said earlier, that where that barrier of entry was so, so low and all of our gym affiliates could lean in on DECA and say, gosh, dang it, I can test all of my people and they'll earn that mark. And then I can sit down with them and say, Listen, give me a few days a week. Commit to fitness. Come to the, join the tribe a few times a week. And I promise you, we're going to lean back in on the exact same test. Nothing changes. And remember when you were a 39 minute when you joined? You know, and the second time you were 29, you're doing it in 22 minutes now. And, and you know, two years ago, this is where you were. And that is so exciting because this is, a, this is very factual. A large majority of the people walking the planet, folks, made it through middle school, high school. They never competed in anything. Most of the things that are out there, the triathlons, the marathons, the Murph, even the Spartans, the Tough Mudders, that's a big, high, scary barrier of entry for them. And with DECA, we wanted to knock that barrier of entry off the side of the cliff and throw it away. There is no barrier of entry now. Every single person walking the planet has their start line. And you know what, J.C.? We've proved it out, brother. We got about a 99.5% completion percentage. Most of them are finding their finish line. I don't care if they're 100 pounds overweight and never competed in anything in their life. Well, I don't I don't know where you get your crazy ass numbers, but I, I've seen it with my own two <laughs> eyes. So, um, and, and I'd say the last thing on the DECA piece, because this isn't all about DECA, but it is something that we believe in, obviously. It's very purposeful. Um, And it is truly proven to be for all levels of fitness, but it's that leaderboard and that leaderboard is part Mm -hmm. of the gamification process. So I get to compare myself overall to anybody who's participated in a DECA, whether that be strong, mile or fit. Um, I get to uh, compare myself against uh, my own gender. I get to compare myself against my age group. But most importantly, I get to compare mm-hmm. myself against the person I see in the mirror every single day. That's that's yeah. who I want to beat. That's who I want to beat. I want to be a better version of myself, of who I was yesterday, a week ago, 30 days ago. And this is the test to show where I where I am in, in that journey. So I, I really love the topic of gamification. I see this happening more and more throughout the fitness industry, and I think it's an awesome thing. Um, it, it's more fun. It creates feelings of accomplishment and achievement. Um, it's it's trackable, right? You know, we know every thirty to forty five days, if you if you test in Deca, you can track yourself. Um, you can you know you you struggle with nutrition, 
There's ways to gamify nutrition. There's food apps out there that, you know, I, my wife is using one of those apps right now to, to test if she's burning, burning fat or, or burning uh, carbs. You know, those types of things are out there. Um, I, I think you also, it, just overall, you're going to elevate your chances of meeting your fitness goals, you know, by gamifying your fitness. Mm -hmm. um, and, and the other cool thing, now we, we have a new relationship uh, with a partner of ours called MyZone. Okay, so I want to give them a shout out. This belt, okay, has been motivating me for 10 years now. Okay, what it does for me is it tracks every workout. It tracks um, my effort level in comparison to, to my mm -hmm. maximal heart rate. Um, it also, uh, it, it connects me with a community. Connects me with a community. It connects me with you. Um, you know, you and I are on the app together. You can see my workouts. I can see yours. Um, I, JC's yeah, kicking I my ass. I can say, hey, Yancey, awesome job today. I give it a like, just like it, as if it's social media. The other thing um, that I can do is I can talk some trash to Yancey for his weak ass workout, <laughs> which, which uh, definitely isn't the case. But it creates all these challenges and motivation and this inspiration where I, I think, one, um, it, it's cool to, to be able to compete and be challenged with others, but it's a way for me to self-monitor my own workouts. It's a, it's a way to hold me accountable because I know if I don't get my my zone effort points, you know, that, that I'm striving for every 30 days, like for me, I need to get 5,000 my zone effort points every single month or I had a horrible month of training, okay? That's, that's my goal. I, it also keeps me on track day to day because I'll look like, okay, what am I averaging up through June 10th or June 15th? I better get after it, you know? The other fun thing is like if mm -hmm. I go climb a mountain or go for a big hike, man, I get a lot of my, my zone effort points and, and my connections are going to see that and they're, they're going to cheer me on. You know, my tribe behind me is, is in this belt. So it just allows you to track things consistently. It also helps you prevent overtraining. You know, um, a lot of people, sometimes they're always shooting for the yellow and the red and, and being at these really high levels. But we know as fitness professionals, it's not always about how long or how hard you get after it. And, and this is going to give you the tracking mechanism to know whether or not you're overtraining. I've used it with so many different clients over the years of like, hey, you're getting winded and we're not even doing our normal workout today. So we, maybe we just need to scale it back and, and focus more on recovery. So it's a, it's a great tool mm -hmm. overall from, from the training, the coaching perspective. And you know, I always say this as a coach, you know, you got to educate, motivate, motivate and, inspire, and inspire, and you got to utilize your tools. I think, you know, it, I know for some it's like, well, it kind of sounds like a MyZone commercial, but it's, here's the deal, here's the deal, folks. Um, this is an accountability partner. I like the, I like the new switch. I like to wear it on my wrist. Um, cause I'm so used to my Garmin watch. Uh, here's the deal. It's an accountability partner. It's like, if I tell you, uh, I, I put something on the calendar, I've got an event coming up. I'm more likely to train for it. Or if I have a training partner, I mean, in a way when I'm by myself, this gives me a training partner. I kind of get excited to sit down and look at my, look at my little graphs, my color graphs when, when I'm done. I would say no matter what your, your system is to lean in on whatever you need to help pull you off the couch and say, yes, we're truly training. The gamification is because we're training that plays into this whole mindset of we're training for life. We said in an earlier episode that we want to be able to say yes to things when we're 20, 30, 40 years older than we are right now. And, and we're preparing for that every single workout. You know me, I love the 20 minute workout. I'm preparing for life. You, I look in your JC's like 60 minutes. Um, but any and all accountability partners and mentors that, that help you say yes to that workout one at a time, we're just stacking good days on top of each other. And we wake up and it's like, you know what? I've had 50, 60, 70 good days, 50, 60, 70 good weeks. Mm -hmm. And now look at the progress. My deca mark used to be 39. Now it's uh, now it's twenty two. Um, here, here's something that I want to I want to add. Ninety eight percent 
of our life. Doesn't matter if we're talking about business, raising kids, or training for something in our athletic career. There's no spotlight. There's no cheering squad. You know, the Friday night lights aren't on watching. It's and a lot of times it's just it's just you and your workout. Uh, you and your grinding with your kids or you and your grinding with the big project that you want to turn in. Two percent of the time the lights are on and there's the, the fans are cheering and you get to turn in the big project or the kids graduate school or you get to walk up to your competition. You get to walk up to that start line at the in the DECA arena, DECA Strong, DECA Mile, or DECA Fit, and you get to perform. That 2% is the big game day. JC and I always encourage you to fall in love with the 98%. That time, that preparation time for the game day, that's that's life. I, I, I personally, you know, I have I have a lot of clients that they, they just get really zoned in on the 2%. We'll, we'll put that 2% on the calendar, sign up for that 2% day that's coming, but love and cherish each day that gets you to that, that start line, whatever it might be. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, you know, when we, when we came up with the title for this episode, it's know your scoreboard because, uh, I, I keep saying this, uh, comes from Bill Bowerman, but if you, uh, if you have a body, you are an Mm -hmm. athlete. And you, you just said it, Yancey. It's like um, we're playing in this game called life. And when you track those numbers, okay, when you look at uh, your wins and when you look at the, the metrics, how it, whether you're using a MyZone belt or participating in a DECA event and looking at leaderboards, what it, what it does it's going to trigger like a dopamine release, right? Like it's, it's going to trigger the, the neurotransmitters and it's going to get you excited, just like they say it does with, with social media. And it kind of, I, want, I want you to get addicted instead of the phone. Get a little addicted to your mm-hmm. fitness, you know? And I mean that in a yes. healthy way. I mean that in a way that it's, going to, that it's going to cover here, here, and here. So... I would just to, to conclude all this, find, find those uh, measurable objective tools that are going to keep you tracking your progress every single day, every single week. But most importantly, you know, focus on the day, be intentional with that day and win that day. And it just starts with one workout at a time. And, and I, and again, this is to get you off that roller coaster ride of, of fitness, the stopping, the starting, the stopping and starting and the frustration that goes with it. But if we focus on that one win per day, man, you're, you're going to be a champion in life. We got to give a big shout out to all the people over the past year. We, 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 can, we can name them, the Scott Brackemeyers, the Chris Marks and all these athletes that have followed us all over the country. They've earned six, seven, eight marks in the either Deca Strong, Deca Mile, Deca Fits. It's 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 been a wonderful wonderful journey seeing these people lean in on on Deca, in some cases their very first start line, and in many cases it's been a, it's just been a long long time, and in some cases there are cyborgs. But I love celebrating w- with you in the arena and and all the folks that have really embraced Deca. I think I'd like to finish just by saying thank each and every one of you, all of our affiliates, all the Fit Pros, all all the all anybody that signed up for it f- have said yes. Turn on their deck and mark. Thank you so, so much for trusting us in this uh, kind of in our founding year. It's, it's been it's been a fun ride, brother. Yep, absolutely. And and uh, I'd I'd like to add things too because those people have have really validated uh, the mission we're on. And like I've always said, we're on this mission together. We want to impact a hundred million lives and and live a, a life fueled by fitness. So, guys. You know, the, the previous episodes are up on uh, the YouTube channel and, and uh, the, the podcast is here for you. Again, let's get off that roller coaster ride and let's keep climbing. This episode of Spartan Up is brought to you by Brightside. Dealing with anxiety or depression can be paralyzing, but you should know you are not broken and you're not alone. And when you want help, Brightside is there for you. Take a free mental health assessment and get up to $100 credit on your first month of treatment at brightside.com slash spartan. That's brightside.com slash spartan. Thanks for listening to this episode of the DECA series on Spartan Up Podcast. Spartan Up is your partner in resilience for mind, body, and spirit. 
We're here three days every week. Tuesdays, you can find Joe DeSena, founder and CEO of Spartan, interviewing biohackers, business leaders, authors, and athletes. Thursdays and Saturdays, catch episodes from our DECA, Endurance, Trail, Combat, and LaRuta series. Do you know someone who needs a little nudge? Maybe they could use some motivation, tactics to be stronger, healthier, happier, more successful. Tell them about our show. And if you're watching on YouTube, leave us a comment. We want to know who's watching and who's listening. Thanks. See you next time.